co-hostess, Justin Wills, and we're very excited. Happy Martin Luther King Day to everyone out yeah. there. It is a great, great year for uh, Black history, and we don't want to not acknowledge the fact that we wouldn't be here without the work of our past um, historical leaders, such as Martin Luther King. Hashtag I have a dream. And we're in the, live in the studio uh, with Troy, Dr. Troy Bernier. And thank you so much to Miami Community News for sponsoring this program. Remember to like, comment, and share. Yeah, Justin, Troy, how are you guys doing? What's going on? Oh, man. Um, it, it's, it's been a real trip. 2020 has been a, a, a roller coaster. And it's, it's sort of like, uh, for me, it's sort of like in between doctor and in between some other stasis or something. It's yeah. very mysterious, bizarre, twilight zone experience this, yeah. these past many years, to be honest. <laughs> it's been bizarre. It's been a, a very interesting trip. Yeah. So I'm happy to tell you a little bit today about that trip. Yeah. And you brought your beautiful daughter with you, Riley. Riley. Yes, it's my daughter, Riley. Four years old, clearly an artist. She loves her art, yes. And... <laughs> That's right. Oh, you're five, my five. bad. Five, That's five. important. Yeah, it's very it's five. We got to get it right. <laughs> si, si. Um, we would say in Miami, que lindo. Right? Yeah. How are you doing, Justin? How's your week been? Um, it's been pretty good. Uh, just working and also working on the business side as well. Uh, we like talked about the yesterday, actually, right? Yeah. Um, but it's been pretty good overall, and I'm happy that it's MLK Day. Of course, I have to wear my all black. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you want to show them the back of your shirt? Oh, yeah. It's pretty cool. Okay. Um, let's see. It says. Can't, can't colonize, colonize the, vibe. the vibe. That's right. The if vibe. You know what it means, then you know what it means. Listen, my much, vibe is but... unshakable. Exactly. Yeah. But, um, yeah. If whatever. If it doesn't break you, it just makes you harder. Exactly. Like tempering steel. Yeah, and we were talking a little bit before the show about you have some experience with pandemics in Africa in and such. Why don't you, for the viewers, because we're here to talk a little bit about the, the Miami Science Film Festival, which science you, fiction. science fiction, yeah. science fiction yeah. film it's festival. It's a mouthful. Well, it's right off the tongue, which is happening in February. Yes. Last and week. you founded this yes. several years ago. Yes. This, uh, this was, it started out as um, just to be honest with it all, the Miami International Science Fiction Film Festival, which we call Misi Fee. Misi Fee. In Spanish, M I C Fee. Misi Fee. My <gasps> science fiction. You'd be surprised how many okay. Spanish speaking people don't get it. And as a result, we've kind of created a separate brand called Sci Fi Miami to okay. help digest the, the verbiage. But um, it's, a, it's a response. Misi Fee. Sci-Fi Miami is a response to the glory and fame that came from um, our experience of the, the popularity of the documentary film Journey to Planet X. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you had a chance to, to look at that, but Journey to Planet X is a documentary film um, which was produced by uh, some folks at Brooklyn Underground uh, Films, Josh Corey, Miles Kane, who... Uh, pretty much chronicle the story of myself and Eric Swain, um, produce a science fiction film called Planeta Desconocido. And people, and that's another story. Why did you name it? We're in Miami. So um, <laughs> um, this film, uh, which was a story about the film, Planeta Desconocido, this film, this documentary carried the film very nicely mm -hmm. and debuted at the Tribeca Film Festival. Amazing. I'm, we're talking top of the world, um, only one of the film had more press. Folks really don't grasp it, but you could just Google it. And um, it was a three-year film festival run, which is, that's typically as good as it gets. Mm -hmm. And all of the fame and the, the goodness that came out of this, because we, we didn't really make any money. You know, we were paid to go here, paid to go there. Please come, this, that kind of thing. We were sent uh, uh, airline tickets mm -hmm. and um, and provided hotel and valet and every other thing you can imagine 
And it was such an awesome global experience because we were at all of these different festivals in the world. And I think it was that was launched by Michael Moore, who saw the film at Tribeca, and he said this is his top ten, in his top five. We were in his top five. And that's what kicked it off. So we were at the Little Rock Film Festival. We were at Michael Moore's Film Festival in um, in Traverse City. We were in um, Sitges, which is the oldest science fiction film festival in the world. It's, I want to say it, it predates Franco, you know, when he was in power in Spain. That's how long, how old that festival was. So we, we had this amazing opportunity to attend festivals all over the planet. Uh, meet with meet people had screenings of 600 800 people in the theater you know it, it couldn't get better so for me having been treated so well um having that high level of exposure all over the world and to be let down so softly and gently you know so a lot of times people when there's success when it, and it just ends mm -hmm. it, i was let down gracefully like i was in a parachute yeah, you know, so it was a it was a very positive experience, very a, a learning experience. Yeah, and I felt the best way to give back was to create a science fiction film festival in South Florida because we didn't have one, and mm -hmm. there was so much pushback from across the board in producing this. It was not easy. It took us three years to make the film, um, and the documentarians followed those whole three years. Beautiful. So it's a feel good doc. It's very positive. It's inspired so many people. And to this day, here we are, year, eight, we're in year eight of the Science Fiction Film Festival. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. And the, in the submissions, you, you know, we were in the middle of 2020, which is grief, horror, loss, death. Everything that could go wrong has gone wrong. Mm hmm. Okay, except one thing. I don't know if it's worth saying it, but Please, um, let's not. <laughs> but with all of that, this year we have way more films submitted than two previous years. Amazing. Yeah. I am blown away by what people in the world produce. Well, in the middle, in the time, during the time of COVID. I think that makes sense, though, because I know for a lot of creatives, what's really helping people get through this time is creativity. Yes. You know, like mm -hmm. you're at home or you just have, you have to spend more time with yourself, right? Yes. So that creativity is natural. Yes. Yeah. Tell yes. us, about the when do people submit to the film festival? If they have a science film, but um, how do yeah, they do we, that? Yeah, we call that open season. Okay. And open season, um, you know, it started back in May. In May. So, you know, if you're if you're a filmmaker, you have to learn how to submit to a film festival. Okay. There is a science behind it. Mm -hmm. And the, the season is long and open. So you collect several hundred to thousands of films. We're not we're not in the thousands, okay? okay? But you collect a lot of films and during this time you're watching the films. Oh my because there's God. no one in the world to watch five hundred films in, in a month. Oh, um, makes sense. Yes. For me, you know, and most folks, I, I've caught a lot of grief with this because I can't speak for all festivals, but Misi Fee, I personally watch every film that comes in. That's submitted. Every mm -hmm. film that's submitted. Fantastic. I watch it. Okay. So you, you can't slip something in and I don't know, you know, if it's good or not. I watch everything that comes in and I have a say on uh, uh, if this is good or if it's not. Uh, but we do have a, a team of judges that also watch the films and provide lots of artistic feedback. Because at the end of the day, I'm not uh, a trained as a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. I'm not trained as I'm a trained as I'm trained as a scientist. I'm a mm -hmm. geologist. Right. Okay. That's just like ran another random fact. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but geology and science fiction. You oh, name any good sci-fi, and I guarantee you, there's geology in it. Guarantee it. I actually have a well, yeah, no. I the one I'm watching right now, the way that they they kill the beings is with iron. That's geology, right? It comes Minerals. from the earth. It's, 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 it's a, <laughs> a good point. It's a good point, but you know that's an element, and, and and they're probably getting the iron out of rocks or something. Like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's all. It's always like this. And then just about any good sci-fi, I can almost guarantee you ninety percent or more there's going to be something about geology or water. I love sci-fi mm. because it's action-y typically yeah. enough, 
But then some action movies, they have this love story that's like, oh, you know, but sci-fi typically, you know, sort of, they usually don't have. Well, to, to uh, give a little homage to the Harmony Gold folks, um, which I've, I've had a conversation with them recently. And there was an article that I came across by one of the folks, I think it was IO, he was a former editor from IO magazine. But he, his article said that Robotech was the greatest love story in science fiction. And we're going to prove that. We're going to validate. Let's not prove. It's already been proven. We're going to validate that in the festival this year because there's going to be a little bit of a discussion and debate about uh, Robotech and its creator, Macross, which is the Japanese version um, that came to the United States. Robotech was this really cool Sunday morning program. Uh, I'm sorry, Saturday morning program that mostly you would figure kids would watch this, but Japanese product anime isn't really for kids. Mm -hmm. right. It's really for adults. And yeah. Robotech was not, in my opinion, a kid's show. No, too much violence. And the drama was more adult level than it is kid level. Mm -hmm. it's very, it was very mature compared to a lot of stuff that we see today. Um, and it was one of the first. And so much came from it. So many people watched Robotech and decided to make science fiction films, a lot of the Battlestar Galactica TV series and stuff that they do. Stuff is straight out of straight out of Robotech, straight out of Robotech, everything down to the particle physics. So, um, you know, we can we're, we're going to cover and discuss a lot of these things. And we're going to have we have some very exciting guests at the festival. Um, everybody remembers Tribbles, Trouble with Tribbles. We have Mr. David Gerald, who is the writer of that episode at Star Trek. Mm -hmm. He's attending the festival, and he's an amazing star uh, science fiction writer. So he's going to be talking not about Star Trek, per se, unless you ask him. But he will be speaking about science fiction, how to write science fiction, stuff like that. And um, it's all virtual, the festival this the year? The festival is 100% virtual this year, second time, because it was virtual last year. Le that, which was a, a scramble okay. to, put to put together for you guys? Yeah, we it was a scramble because we, were, we finally had a venue. A lot of the theaters were having problems, whatever. I don't know what was going on with some of them. They just don't understand uh, partnerships. They don't understand the definition of partnerships. Mm -hmm. um, um, so it's been a very serious challenge mm -hmm. with some of them. But, um, you know, basically that means that you have to have skin in the game. If I'm coming to your neighborhood to put on a show, you need to tell your people. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, no one's going to show up or the people who do show up get angry with you and me <laughs> because and someone didn't tell them that this was going on in their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. That does happen. Um, you know, but we put in huge efforts to advertise the festival. We have hundreds of thousands of viewers. Yeah. Um, but being an international festival, we have way more people from the international scope outside of South Florida watching the festival than we have people inside South Florida that watch the festival. It's kind of embarrassing. Yeah, I attended um, a couple years ago, I think a, a screening or two at the downtown theater, Silver, Silver Spot, something. Yes. It's a, Very nice. We, we had a, we had a screening there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well done. I love you. The, you were there. I was there. You attended the festival. I did. Oh, what film did you see? I don't remember what film I saw. I was there. <laughs> Pravi invited me. Anything oh. Pravi invites me to, I oh, go. Oh, this was, uh, yeah, so I, so yeah, that was a very good year. That was it a was. very good year. We had a very high attendance of filmmakers. I can't speak about, you know, what all of, a lot of other festivals uh, do locally. Um, my training comes from the journey, the journey of Planet X provided me with all of the high-end festivals that I attended. Mm -hmm. So I learned from those festivals. And, um, we have 30, 40 filmmakers show up. 30, 40 films, more than half of the festival is represented. Yeah, you will meet the filmmaker and you can have dinner with them and hang out, party, all that. Yeah. Uh, let's say that you just want to know more about the festival and attend. Where would you go to learn more about the festival? We made it easy. And of course, you go to misifi.com. Okay. Right? M I S C I F I.com. Dot com. Or sci-fi miami.com it'll forward you and we are all over social media mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so you can find us on instagram twitter um facebook you can find us there youtube and um and i'll direct you to the page it's up 
for you to purchase a, a, a film pass to watch all of the films. They're really good prices. Yeah. It's only 199 bucks, which you can see all of the films, all the content, all the interviews, meet mm -hmm. the people online. I love that. $199. Mm -hmm. And Great maybe you can price. help me get a firm to get a payment plan for folks if that's too much. Yeah. Um, what do you mean help? What do you need help to set it up? To yeah, 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 yeah. Well, what's your, what pay, yeah, we're, well, let's talk about We're a little short staffed. <laughs> for sure. We can help yeah. you with that. No worries. That's, we're tech savvy. Yeah. We always, we, we love volunteers. The festival's always been supported by. I love to volunteer. Volunteers. The people, you, know, you never know who you'll meet. That's you know, of course true. it's virtual this year, but. And in the you know. spirit of MLK, anyone could be great because anyone can serve. So giving yeah. is very. One important. year we had uh, Marty Cove show up. Okay. Cobra Kai. <laughs> he came, mm, yeah. So right. it, it was nice. It was nice. It was nice. Yeah. Cobra Kai is, Netflix. if you know the, the Karate Kid. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I and there's that, a series on Netflix bet. now too. He's got a very, a very strong, um, show out now. They re like reimagined or reproduced it, and yeah. is doing very well. And so your movie in particular, The Journey to Planet X, is available yes. on Amazon. Yes, on Amazon. Right Prime. now, you can watch it eight ninety nine, or if, you know, if you have the Amazon plan, you can watch that. Um, do you have any comments on... Ask me anything. Okay, perfect. I would like to know a little <laughs> bit about this. I've heard some things about this film industry in Miami and regulations, deregulations. We need incentives. Any comments there? Or maybe, I don't know, we could, you could introduce me to someone who could break it down for me. Uh, because well, there's so many creatives here. Yeah, yes, they are. And the creatives really show their work in the music videos. The music video industry in South Florida, as deregulated mm -hmm. as, it is, is, as it is, it's extremely deregulated. Um, it, it, if not deregulated, it's not protected. Um, so what's happening is people are producing these music videos in the amazing backdrop of South Florida. Mm -hmm. You know, After all, folks, we're, we're in this tropical paradise. And it's beautiful. So with great equipment, lots of folks, you can produce anything. And people are really... The cinematography is fantastic. But when it comes to full-scale productions, those cost money. It costs a lot of money, and they're, and you need permission. Okay? It doesn't cost much for permission if you have a lot of money to make your film. Mm -hmm. if, you have a, if you have the budget to make a film, it doesn't cost a lot to get permission. It's minuscule in comparison. It's the cost of craft services. Um, it's just you just go through the motions, which some people will define as the bureaucracy, but there's a lot of paperwork and explanation and approval and time. Is the paperwork, are we talking about actual paperwork or have they at least digitized, digitized the process? <gasps> it's beautiful. It's really, really nice. Oh my God. Put it at, show the camera. You just show it. Show it. Mm -hmm. I love it. <laughs> Will you sell it or do you sell your work yet? Are you businesswoman? Make sure you put your name <laughs> on it. Oh, good. good. It's very good. nice. Oh, wow. So in smart, intelligent, five years old, writing your own name and coloring. Yes. Perfect. Um, the lines. Yeah. Like that's, that's more than I did at five. Can we give it to her? She's giving it to you. <laughs> Oh, to me or to Justin? That's so nice. To me. Oh, Justin. You have I'm a fan. So I'm going to cry you have a fan. right now. I feel like this is going to be worth a lot of money one day too, but I'm never going to sell it ever. <laughs> Unless you tell me. So so I'm actually a youth art collector mm. because it's very oh, wow. smart to collect youth art. Number yeah. one, it's very affordable. Okay. Yes, that's true. Number two, if you pay a child for their artwork, then they start to understand, I can make money doing the this. value. Yeah. That's right. That's and right. they start to really connect it. And then if they blow up or when they blow up, you have like one of the very first pieces they ever commissioned and did. Yes. So maybe if there's a price that I could um, sell this for, we could agree, Riley. That's what I sometimes do with my youth artists. They always have outrageous prices. $23 million they sell me or something like that. Yeah. And 42 cents. Um, but to, to make sure I, I'm very clear with um you know the permits policies of filmmaking you know south florida has a lot of money yeah. but mm -hmm. also understand that it's a qualified investor just as that in, that person wants to qualify your film or your ability to make a film 
they have to also be qualified in being the right kind of person to know how to invest their money because mm -hmm. most do not. An example of that would be if I'm going to, say, invest in an oil field, um, in an oil field operation to produce oil for gasoline purposes, you know, to sell petroleum. Yeah. Um, you have to understand that it can take a considerable amount of cash up front to do that in order to get a return. The returns can be very good, but there's a certain type of financing which is very heavily cash dependent. Same thing goes for a mining operation. Whereas in some other in other businesses, it may just be based heavily on credit. On credit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's very little invested cash, but it's just a matter of your credibility in the financial sector. Mm -hmm. They're very different from each other. So the return and how long it takes to get a return also weighs oil and gas, mining explorations. These things are in many years, five, ten years operations until they mature properly. Um, with a film, you've got a much more shorter window, but there's don't expect a return, you know, overnight. Yeah, like it's still yeah. longer than a music video, for example. Yeah, it's not like buying a house and flipping mm -hmm. it in six months. Mm -hmm. Fix it's not, you know, it's not like buying a house. Okay, we bought this house for six hundred thousand dollars. We did all these wonderful fine things, and we had you know some uh, popular celebrity living there for a month, and we have this now property now worth for one point two million dollars. That okay. sounds like a little business plan right there. Well, that's what people do. I didn't that's know. how a lot of people make money in South Florida. But um, you know, if you have the money, that's 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 how you can do it. Yeah. Okay. It's not it's not a miracle, and you don't need to you know know uh, any kind of quantum mechanics to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing is, is that it's a total different way of making money and risking and leveraging your money. Mm -hmm. Films is different. It's a global audience now. Yeah. Okay. And guess what? Nobody watches your film. I don't care how good your film is. Star Wars, you look at the number of people who watch the film versus the number of people who potentially can watch the film. Yeah. Okay? So that's a talk that I'm putting together okay. as well. Hmm. Uh, that uh, I don't know if I'm going to deliver it this year, but that's one of my talks. And But do not be put down by that because you only need a certain number to get a return that's worth continuing making your films mm. that'll provide a return for that investor within that window if it's a market appropriately and if you have marketable content mm -hmm. if you don't understand those parameters then you don't you you don't know how to do that business mm. you don't we have got to have you back do you live far from the studio bay Is it you're speaking to a geologist i uh, travel the world okay to, great to, so it's uh, no get problem because i want to get you back down here to talk a little bit about the climate crisis uh, yeah. too yeah. yeah that's a lot yeah, there's, there's a lot going on there. I know. We have to have you back here. Just to remind the viewers, the Miami Science Fiction Film Festival Misi. is coming. Fee? Yeah, Missy Fee. Missy Fee. Missy Fee, mm -hmm. February. Grab your all exclusive access passes, only $1.99 online. Do that now and check out the website for more information. Yes. Give it to them one more time. Social media. Social media. Well. Misifi.com. <laughs> <laughs> What's the website? One yeah. more time. Misifi.com. Uh, Misifi.com. Or sci-fi Miami. Or sci-fi Miami. Dot com. Perfect. Thank you so much, Troy, for taking the time to come on today. Thank you, Riley. You were great. And um, yeah, we'll talk to you again soon. All right. Thank yeah, you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> Perfect. So up next, oh, did we wrap? No, we're we're still rolling. Okay, great. Um, up next, we're bringing in my sister who is in town. Yeah, visiting. I'm excited to meet her. Yes, For welcome, sure. Miss Kelsey Shayna Dorsey. Woo woo woo. Hi. Thank you. So good to be here. Thank you. And thank you to Miami Community News for sponsoring this program. And happy MLK Day to everyone. So, Kelsey, what does MLK Day mean to you? Gosh, it means a lot to me, especially in the current climate that we're in. Um, it means striving for unity, um, striving for equality and 
really, I like, I like what your shirt said about colonization. Oh, thank you. Trying to decolonize Thanks. and, and lift up black voices. Yeah. 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 I love that. Dude, it's my sister. <laughs> yeah. I know. Right? I know. So talented. We mm -hmm. should take a moment to publicly acknowledge Kelsey Shayna Dorsett, my sister. I want you to know that the family is super proud of you. Like literally. I mean, in case you didn't know, Thank we you. adore you. She's the baby of our family. She's getting her master's degree at NYU University. Yep. And Amazing. she's killing it. She's a leader in her community. She's a fun gal to be around. I love you so much. I'm always just super proud of you, impressed with you. Can't wait to watch all of your dreams come true in life. And thank you to MLK for making it partially possible and all the other people that really that have pave the road and will continue to do the work to, so that we can all reach our dreams in life. Do you have any questions for my sister? I feel like, cause I'll just chat away. Um, yeah. So I do want you to like introduce yourself. Yes. Um, just like, cause you know, we might know more, we might know like, your credentials or, you know, what you're studying, for example, sure. but the audience might not. So yes. if yes. you may. Hi, I'm Kelsey Dorsett. I am currently studying mental counseling at New York University, getting my master's degree. i um, about to graduate in May. Um, and I currently am giving, uh, providing counseling services to children and families and child welfare in New York City. Um, that's kind of who I am. In my free time, I like to cook, do yoga, travel, when it's appropriate, mm. not COVID. Yeah. So you had to transition to virtual studies in the middle of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. What was that experience like? Um, it was really difficult to transition. Uh, I did probably a semester and a half of in-person school before we've gone completely online for now the rest of the program for mm -hmm. me. Um, so, you know, we thought it was going to be a three week, extra three week spring break. We're going to come back and we never came back. Um, and uh, at first it was very exhausting. It took so much longer to get anything done, um, like for homework, uh, just doing things over Zoom. It was felt very disconnected. Mm. Um, and we did it through the summer and uh, I just finished my fall semester. And I feel um, a lot more adjusted, especially through the fall. I feel like I really got a grasp on things and I was able to adjust. Um, luckily, our program already had an online program for anyone that wanted to do it that way. So it was a pretty smooth transition that, mm. in that aspect. Mm -hmm. um, everything was already set up. Um, so it's doable, but it's less, it's less of a connection. So it is kind of... Um, sad and you know i wish that i could do it in person and you know meet face to face with the faculty and other students um but i i feel like the experience is still of good quality that's very important and are you still living in new york like mm -hmm. at, okay yeah. so you're still living even, and you're taking classes virtually yeah so i'm just okay. doing it from my from my apartment pretty much okay yeah mm-hmm so I would love to, if you feel like sharing, uh, about talk to you about your political views because okay. you have them. Yes. Sure. She's an intelligent voter, guys. She votes. <laughs> um, yeah, I probably have very left, very strong left um, socialist type of political views. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe that no one can be free until everyone's free, pretty much. So I think, you know, I'm glad that Biden is getting inaugurated, but I still think we can do better. Mm -hmm. And Agreed. Yeah. Um, AOC is someone I look up to a lot. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, um, Bernie Sanders. I 
you know, I think there should be Medicare for all. I think that people should be making living wages. Um, poverty should be addressed. There's a lot of issues with all of the isms that still are happening. Classism, racism, um, xenophobia. Mm -hmm. Feminism. Yeah. yeah. I could, all of it. I could go on. <laughs> um, but yeah, those are like, that's kind of a broad summary of my yeah. political views. Mm -hmm. You're so, even though you're very aware of all of these isms, these challenge, challenges, these mm -hmm. um, things that you face every day in your life and that so many are facing and you're aware of it and you're clearly doing, taking action so that you can support working towards solutions by looking at the choice that you chose for your education path, but you still maintain, you're so positive, you know, day to day, you're, able, you're happy. Mm -hmm. um, what do you attribute that to for those out there who, you know, they're being bogged down by all of these things that are wrong with the world and it's like they can't see past it. Do you have any tips for them? Mm, sure. Um, well, that makes me think of a couple things. I think the first thing I've been reading this book called Trauma Stewardship, and it's kind of about that, like trying to um, maintain your own mental health while you're working and looking at the, all of the problems in the world. Um, it talks about, you know, how both very, very good things and very, very terrible things are always just going to exist. And you kind of have to accept that um, in terms of, you know, what happens in the world. And I think, you know, that's kind of helpful for, that was helpful for me to, to realize like you can't make every single thing perfect, mm -hmm. but you can still, you know, move forward and try. Um, another thing, I think is you can't really get anything done by being very angry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really helpful to understand, you know, the people that are making you angry, where they're coming from, what their worldview is, you know, what environments were they growing up in that made them see things in such a way that's different from you. And that really helps me understand like, oh, well, you know, this person has these biases because they've never, you know, they, they've been, ex they've never been exposed to anything different and they're in echo chambers growing up their whole life. And I feel like that, that's when you can actually make real changes when you can understand each other. And then that's when you can, you know, have empathy and maybe, share ideas or views or turn things around. Um, but I think it's very difficult if, you know, there's there's just a wall up and it's you against them. Yeah, it makes it difficult to communicate. Yeah. Um, what are some things that you do day to day to keep yourself um, staying positive? Like whether it's, you said you mentioned, you mentioned yoga mm -hmm. and cooking. Yeah, just like things that I enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. um, I try to incorporate, I try to, you know, at first I was like, okay, I'll do self-care on these days, on Wednesdays, it's my free day. And then I was like, no, I'm just going to like make my lifestyle um, like curated to be always in like a way that's for me. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I know, I don't know if everyone can do this, but I... <laughs> I now I really, you know, I'm good with my boundaries and I don't do things that I don't want to do and I communicate that to people or mm -hmm. it's very good. I think that's like a big part of it is just like do things that fill you up and don't do things that drain you um, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically even. Um, so that's one thing. Um, and then of course, yeah, I enjoy cooking a lot. So I do that every day. And um, and eating is good. Too. And eating, <laughs> yeah. Um, 
and if there's ever, you know, any negativity, it's important to, you know, not avoid it mm-hmm. and acknowledge it and let it move on. Mm-hmm. Justin, you're super good at setting boundaries too. I am. You are. Yeah, <laughs> you are. That's one of the reasons that I wanted you to come co-host this show with me because you know how to say no and you know how to state your opinion and stuff. So mm-hmm. I'm, I want to make you aware of that you have that skill. Thank you. I mean, I definitely, I think no is like, learning how to say no is as important as learning how to say yes. Um, but I do think that I sometimes struggle with reinstating the boundaries, even though I know that I have them, but I definitely try. Definitely. But you said something that really interesting to me. You said that you don't do what you don't want to do, right? Which, which I understand because if, for example, let's say that my friend invited me out to do something, which I knew that I was going to be like emotionally draining, um, then I wouldn't go. Mm-hmm. But by you putting yourself in that place of not doing what you want to do, does that affect your growth in any way? Because sometimes to grow, we have to do things that we don't want to do. So how do you like identify something that's going to help you grow versus something that's going to like emotionally drain you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are difficult things. And sometimes even when I'm doing something, I think that I wanted to do, you know, you can, I can find myself feeling like, oh, like this is really draining. I don't like this. Why am I doing it? And you can get into like a negative spiral, Mm -hmm. but it's important, you know, to think of why you chose to put yourself in that position. So, you know, in the work that I do, if I find like this is really stressful and I, if I get frustrated with how the way that it is or something, I can remember like I chose this for myself. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, applied to grad school and saw out this career and literally chose for me to do this. And that kind of grounds me and like, okay, actually, you know, I wanted to do this. This was a choice. No one's making me do this. Um, so that kind of helps me get through like those kind of things. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. She's so smart. I know. And, you know, I also wanted to ask you with the work that you do, like, what are some challenges that children are facing um, today compared to, mm-hmm. I guess, like 2019 compared to 2020 and 2021? Like, do you mm-hmm. see any differences like, in the challenges they're facing? With the pandemic? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, there's a number of things that are happening, especially with the pandemic mm-hmm. and schools being closed. Um, especially with families who have multiple children. Um, I know New York was, New York City was doing a blended learning schedule, which means some kids go to school on some days and the other kids go to school on the other days. But I had some families where they've got multiple children. So they're having to set one kid up on virtual learning. Well, they got to take the other kid to school that day because it's blended, but they're on opposite schedules. And it's just chaos. Mm. Um, So that's like one example. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, people are, everyone's home all the time together. Mm. Um, So if, you know, there's one computer and you have to work from home, but your kid also has virtual learning, that's an issue. Um, I think kids are probably Mm -hmm. more reliant on technology these days Mm -hmm. um, to, you know, entertain them. Can't, it's not really safe for them to be outside. Um, Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a lot that goes into it based on, you know, how much resources and money that families have to provide for their kids. You know, some kids might not be affected as much as lower income families. Jeez. You have really brought me back into perspective. I mean, I thought about it in the very beginning, but now it's kind of like, oh my gosh, yes. And there's six months left, people, families, teachers, just hold on. Six more months of this thing with the school, and then it's summer. 
Um, and you know, we are, uh, I'm thinking of you, we're praying for you guys, honestly, like I really don't know how parents do it and teachers do it. Yeah. Um, I hope that this time after we give all the teachers a raise, like significant double, triple mm -hmm. the salary, to mm -hmm. be honest with you. And thank you, Kelsey, for coming on the show today and for coming down to visit me. She's in town all month. So stay tuned to my Instagram for little additional snippets of Kelsey in Miami. And Justin, any last words? Um, I really appreciated having you on the show. And I hope that you come back before you leave. Yeah. Because I definitely want to have like another conversation about just everything. I think you you yes. say like very insightful things and I love it. Thank you so, so much. <laughs> of course. Thanks yeah. for having me. And thank you to Miami Community News for sponsoring this program. We'll be back next Monday with our fantastic guest um, and film maker, Dorian Emerson, who is going to talk to us about his award-winning 